Hi, and welcome back to Lisa's Stamp Studio. We're going to be creating this adorable buckle fold birthday card today. Keep in mind, you can change up the color palette and the orientation for today's card. As a matter of fact, you're going to want to come back to my YouTube channel in just a few days where I've got a twist on this exact same fun fold in a different format. So if you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, I would encourage you to do so. Make sure you click the small bell icon that's next to it so you'll receive notifications when I'm live here on YouTube as well as when I upload new videos. Let's head over to the stamp table and let's get started on today's project. Here's a better look at the card we're going to be creating together today. While this may look complicated, it is super easy and I'm going to walk you through every single step. You're going to find all the cutting dimensions for today's project down in the video description below. There's going to be a link. It's underneath the title of this video and underneath the name Lisa Stamp Studio. In the start of the text, you'll see the words show more. If you click on the words show more, it's going to expand the text and then scroll down and you'll find the link there. You're going to need two pieces of Whisper White cardstock. These are cut two and three quarters by four inch. One will be for the inside and one will be for the outside. So let's start with the outside of the card first. I'm going to be using Bermuda Bay ink for my first word. And the word that I chose is the word wish. And it comes from the stamp set called Broadway Birthday. Lots of fun, real bold images in here. And you're going to notice too that there's some dotted highlights here that actually fit on top of these stamped images to give you a 3D look. The great thing about this stamp set is it is available with coordinating dies. And you'll see those here. These are called the Broadway Lights dies. Now I've pulled out a couple pieces that we're gonna be using today. I've mounted the word wish and you can see that it's large and it's solid. So we're gonna go ahead and ink that up. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that your ink pad is not too dry because the better the ink pad is inked, the better impression you're gonna get. I'm gonna stamp that here in the lower right corner. While I have this ink pad out, I'm going to switch over to a scrap piece of Whisper White cardstock. And from that exact same stamp set, I've pulled out the candle image. This is the candle base. I'm going to ink that up and I'm going to stamp that here. There is a die for this, so we don't have to fussy cut that with our scissors. And while we're working on that candle, I'm going to switch over to the Crushed Curry ink pad. And this time I'm pulling out the candle flame from that stamp set. And I'm going to ink that up and I'll stamp that here. I'm leaving room between here so that I can die cut both of these different images at the same time. I'm going to slide that off to the side for a second. And I want to complete the phrase here for the front panel. I decided to use crumb cake ink. Now, intuitively, we always want to use basic black or maybe even basic gray, a neutral shade, which is what the crumb cake is. But I want to give a little bit of interest to this without taking away from the focal point that I'm going to create here on the front. I chose the words make a from that stamp set. Now ink those up in the crumb cake ink and I'm going to leave a little bit of room between the wish and where I'm going to stamp this so that I have room for my candle. You'll recall that I had a second piece for the inside of my card and while I have my ink pads out, I'm going to go ahead and do that stamping as well. I'm going back to the Bermuda Bay ink and again, the words are all from that same stamp set. This one says you deserve it. I'll ink that up and I'm going to stamp that here near the top. I'm going to be using the Crushed Curry ink next, and this says it's your birthday, so that the outside of our phrase and the inside of the phrase are going to coordinate nicely. Before we work on our assembly, let's go ahead and die cut these images. There's a die for the candle, and there's a die for the flame. Now, I want to give you a tip about this. Oftentimes, we struggle with these slipping on these small images. And I love to use these. These are post-it note flags or tabs. Even a post-it note would work. I like to line it up exactly where I want it. And once I have it positioned, I take the post-it note and I go across the cardstock stamped image across the die to secure it in place. And then I can take another post-it note or a post-it flag and do the same thing here and then run this through your die cutting machine. That will leave us with our two candle pieces. Let's go ahead and start putting the panels together and then I'll show you how I'm going to use the candles for a creative touch on the front of this card. This piece of cardstock is cut three inches by eight and a half. I did score it in half at four and a quarter. I did that right before you joined me. I'm going to just measure up my ends to make sure they're even and I'll use my bone folder for that nice crisp edge. I want to make sure that the opening is going to be on the left. I'm going to be adhering this greeting to the front panel of this. I'm going to flip this over on my silicone craft sheet and I'm going to use my adhesive on the back side. I love the silicone craft sheet since liquid glue, hot glue, and adhesive will not stick to it. So if it falls my work surface, it'll rub right off. That's going to keep this area nice and sticky free. 
I'm looking to adhere this so that there's a slight border all the way around and then I'll press that in place. That second piece that we've stamped now is going to go on the inside of that card. So we'll add adhesive once again and I'll open this card up and this is going to go here on the inside. Remember the candle that we die cut? I'm going to use that in place of the eye. So I'm going to adhere it right over the top. And I want to give you a tip about this. You're going to notice that the candle is very narrow and the eye has the lines that go across the top and the bottom. By stamping this in the same color as this, it's going to be less noticeable because there is a slight width difference. I have my mini dimensionals here, but I am going to cut these smaller so they'll fit well on here. Along the outside border of the mini dimensionals, it's solid. And I love this area to cut small strips. So I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to cut off a couple strips here. I've removed the paper backing from one side. We're going to flip that candle over and we'll place one of those strips here. And we'll do the same thing now with this other one here at the top. I'm using my take your pick tool with that putty tip to flip that over. And that is the perfect size for one of the mini dimensionals without it having to be cut down. So I'm going to tack that here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to remove those paper backings. And then here on the card is where we're going to place the candle. I'm looking to align the bottom the very best that I can, as well as the sides. And then here I'm going to overlap the flame a little bit on the wick and tack that in place. Now let's work on the base of the spun fold card. This is Whisper White cardstock and it measures four and a quarter by eight and a half. I scored it at five and a half inches. I'm going to fold on that score line and again I'll use my bone folder for that nice crisp edge. When you're making fun fold cards, reinforcing those creases is very important to make sure the card lays properly. This panel is going to go this way and on that side I chose to place a piece of designer series paper. Just like we've done before, I'm going to go ahead and flip that over and on this side I'm going to add my adhesive. This is from the Birthday Bonanza Designer Series Paper Series, and you're going to see double-sided patterns make it lots of fun and quite versatile for all different types of birthday cards. That's going to get adhered here. Now the next step before we get too far is to create the opening for this buckle tuck, and I'm going to be using the classic label punch. This is going to do all the work for you. You're going to use the punch upside down so you can see where you're going, and we're going to open up this flap. You're going to take the punch and you're going to slide it up inside the cardstock as far as it will go. I'm looking to align the outside edge to the designer series paper. And once I know I have it all the way in, I'm going to squeeze and punch. I'm then going to slide over the punch to the other side, making sure the punch is in as far as it will go, aligning this side to the edge of the designer series paper, and then we'll punch again. That's going to leave us an opening for the buckle. Once again, with the flap on the left-hand side, we are going to adhere a piece of coordinating cardstock, and this is Bermuda Bay. I'm gonna add adhesive to the back side. That's going to get adhered here to the center of the inside of the card. This layer now that we created is actually going to get mounted here in the center of the Bermuda Bay. So just like we've done, we're gonna flip this over and we're gonna add adhesive generously. You are welcome to use liquid glue or tearing tape. This now will get adhered to the center of this Bermuda Bay panel and then press that in place. This panel now on the left is going to fold in and then this layer is going to tuck under like a buckle. Now let's finish decorating it to give some presentation to the front of our card. This is about 17 inches of the crushed curry crinkled seam binding. The one thing I love about Stampin' Up! products is the color coordination. I'm going to open up my card and I'm going to take my seam binding, making sure that it's flat and bringing it to the inside of my card base. I'm going to check to make sure that this is not twisted. Once it's there, I'm going to come up here near the top. I'm going to make a tie and then I'm going to make a bow. Now you're welcome to make a knot or a single loop bow, whatever you prefer. You may have the same issue that I do when I create a bow, which means one loop is bigger than the other and it's uneven. So I wanna give you a tip about that. Make sure that you pull it tightly. That's gonna secure that the knot's gonna stay in place. Either pinch or hold down the knot and then take the raw end and then slightly pull it. And that's gonna adjust the sizes of your loops. Once you've got it where you want it, go ahead and pull this one more time to make sure that knot is nice and secure. And then you can take your scissors and trim up those ends. I'm going to check the inside, make sure it's nice and straight, which it is. I'll go ahead and close this and then tuck the buckle inside. Now, I decided to add a few sequins to add some bling and coordination to my card. But before I do that, I wanted to add a little bit of realistic flair and pizzazz to that flame. And I'm going to be using my Clear Wink of Stella. This is a glittered brush. It already has the sparkles in it, so it's super easy to use. 
I've primed it before I've used it to make sure that it's flowing well. And I'm going to come right over the flame and just brush on some of that sparkle. These beautiful sequins are from the Woven Thread Sequin Assortment. Not only great for shaker cards, but I fished out a few of those colors that I knew would coordinate nicely. And we're going to add those to the card. You can use fine tip glue to adhere them, or you can use glue dots if you have them small enough. And I'm going to put in a big plug for Paper Pumpkin. Every month, the Paper Pumpkin kits include these little tiny glue dots, which are perfect for sequence. Now, if you don't know what Paper Pumpkin is, head over to lisasstampstudio.com and click on Classes, and you'll find the information there. Paper Pumpkin is a monthly craft subscription for pre-cut supplies, a stamp set, and ink, and everything you need to create a fun project. So I've picked it up with my paper piercing tool attachment on my Take Your Pick tool, and I'm gonna place these little blue dots on here where I'm going to want to place my sequence. I love it because there's a paper backing on one side, glue dot on the other, super easy to use, and I don't have to wait for the glue to dry. I'll place another one down here. I'll make sure that they're secure on my card, and then I'll go ahead and use that paper piercing tool attachment just to remove that paper backing. Using the putty tip, I can then pick up my sequin. I'm gonna start with my larger one, and I'm gonna place that here near the top and then press that down on top of the glue dot. I've got my smaller one here, and I like to work an odd number, so I have one more here at the bottom corner. And then all I'm gonna do is tap off those extra paper pieces from my glue dots, and our card is finished. Isn't this fun? I can guarantee whoever receives this is gonna be opening and closing it. Don't forget to come back with me in just a few days so I can show you a variation on this layout for another fun fold. If you have enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up here on YouTube, which is a like and it certainly helps. If you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you're interested in receiving copies of the current catalogs, head over to lisasstampstudio.com and click on Contact Me. Thank you so much for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day.